here we go. We're not on our phone anymore. Okay. So I am trying to learn how to use TradingView. It's it's kind of silly that I don't I don't have much experience with it. I've been trading for like seven or eight years, and the fact that I I don't have a whole lot of experience with TradingView is a little odd. I know, um, but I've just used the same application for the past like seven years, which is TradeStation, uh, and I'm fed up with TradeStation. I just can't do it anymore. It's too much. It's glitchy. It's the app, the phone app in particular, is the most glitchy it's ever been. And it's already really bad. Um, I can't see updated lines anymore. I can't see the price. Uh, I'll be in trades. Like, I'll have a literal open trade, and the app will just crash every time I open it. Can't do that anymore. So I have finally decided to figure out how to use <laughs> TradingView. Um, so I'm going to put some trend lines on the screen. I'll put on some support and resistance. It's going to take me a minute to figure out how to put the lines on the screen using this platform, but I will figure it out. Give me a sec. Okay, so we're looking at oil first. I need to change. I mean, there's, there's so much. I literally all, I just now downloaded the app, like just now. So this is going to take some getting used to. I can see that I'm in a, a one hour time frame. That's totally fine with me. I do want to get a closer look. Okay, so this is where we're at. Cool. So I'm going to just give this a try. I'm pretty sure I usually I usually use rays instead of trend lines cuz a trend line has a um a point A and a, P, a point A and a point B and then it stops. A ray has a point A, a point B and then it um it goes indefinitely in one direction. So that's what I want. Okay, that was fairly easy. Let's try another one. messed up on this one. Let's try that again. Okay, so what I'm looking for in oil is for the price to come up higher than 84. Uh, and looking at it right now, it looks like it actually might just be rolling over. So these are the... Oops. These are the downlines. Oh, you know what? I can't even see any comments. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, Shamar. Um, I got really in the zone. I didn't even see the uh, the chat. <laughs> um, thanks for stopping in, Sebastian. I know it's late. I was supposed to do this like an hour ago, but I just can't get myself to do it. I'm on Pacific Standard Time, and it's only 8.30. The sun's like almost kind of still out at like 7, so I just it's just not a vibe. So I had to wait, but thanks for stopping by. Hi, Shamar. I am trying to, so I, I'm, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but it's fine. Whatever. I am trying to learn how to use TradingView. Uh, I've been using TradeStation for all seven years of my trading career. And I'm done with it. I can't, I can't use it anymore. It's the literal worst. It's like infuriatingly annoying. So, I've been in like trades where the application keeps crashing on me or I'll pull up a chart and I can't even see the most recent price. Like it won't even show me the candle. And I'm like, I can't do it anymore. I can't. So I'm trying to learn how to use TradingView. Um, I'm going to mark up my charts on TradingView just like I would on TradeStation. Um, you absolutely can be of assistance. So I, I only need... Um, Trend lines and support and resistance. And I'm going to need to figure out how to set alerts on the trend lines and the support and resistance. So I'm not trying to add any indicators um, or anything like that. So just as simple as possible tonight. Um, I'm looking at oil. This is oil, crude oil. That's what I trade the most. 
freaking love it, even though I lost $1,300 today uh, trading oil. I went long right here when it broke out of this downtrend line, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe we are we're breaking out. I didn't really expect it to even go very far, though. So when it broke out here, I was only expecting it to get to 86. So I was like, ah, I'll take like a little move, 86. And it's it's hit this 86-ish point quite a few times before. Boom, boom. A few times here. So that's what I anticipated. Uh, and then it just snapped back on me. So I got out. Um, I would have reversed my position to go short, but it was like 2 a.m. So missed it. Took a $1,300 loss. It is what it is. Uh, but now I am... I'm kind of getting the hang of this. I mean, it looks incredibly user-friendly, so I don't think this is going to be very hard. Uh, trading view is very... Oh, <laughs> yes. I just saw that, Sebastian. Yeah. Okay, so right-click the trend line. Here we go. Also, I got to see how I can figure out how to keep um, my chat open. Why does it go away? That's annoying. Um, okay, set alert to set an alert or alarm. It's the second icon on the right that looks like a clock. Here we go. Okay, I see that alert. But what if I want to do an alert like on this guy specifically? Like when the price crosses this trend line, I'm assuming we're gonna right click. Ooh, add alert on Ray. Look how easy that was. Okay, but here's the thing. I don't know which alert I want. I think I only want it once, not once per bar or once per minute. What do you guys usually use? I'm thinking only once. Once should be fine. Maybe once per bar? Nah, I think just once. Okay, so... Okay, that seems easy. Open-ended. Yeah, we'll make it open-ended. What? I have premium. I just bought this shit. All right, whatever. We'll leave it at that. Okay, create. I just bought premium. I got to figure out how to connect it. Um, okay, here we go. So don't forget the horizontal lines. Anytime you add a line, there's an alarm clock on the palette. Click the alarm and hit create. A little alarm appears to show you the alert. Sweet. You can set parameters once. And once per bar is fine. I'll do... Uh, maybe I should do once per bar in case I miss it. What if, like, I miss the alert? Then it's done. You know what I'm saying? So let's just do once per bar just because. Okay, edit the alert and once per bar. That looks about right. We're going to call this one an oil mini breakout. It's the mini breakout. The big breakout is going to be, whoops, sorry, <laughs> is going to be when it crosses this um, longer trend line, the 85 price. But okay, so that was that was easy. Hi, Jed. Sign in or I won't save. I am signed in. Okay, you see this right here? I'm signed in, but um, I have pro and I don't. Uh, I'll, I can figure that part out later, but I just bought um, the pro version, and I don't know. I bought it on my phone, so I don't know if it updated here. I'll I'll figure that part out later, I guess. Um, apart from stocks, what else do you trade? Hi, Jed. I actually don't trade stocks anymore. <laughs> um, I trade futures now. Um, I've been trading futures for like two years now. One to two years, we'll say. Not great with time. Um, but it's been like one to two years. Yeah, we'll call it one to two years. And I've been a full-time trader for one year. Hi, Jordan. Oh, Jordan, hi. I'm live. Good night, Sebastian. Thank you for stopping in. That didn't sound as cool as I thought it would. <laughs> Torster. Um, my last name is Duke, and people say Dukester, so that sounds a little bit cooler. I like I like the direction you're headed in. <laughs> um, which one is better? To each their own, for sure. I don't think that one is better than the other. 
Um, people trade Forex. People t- trade. My brain is a little bit foggy. Let's. Okay, so people trade futures, people trade Forex, people trade stocks, people trade crypto, and each one fits almost like an individual lifestyle. So I trade futures. It is perfect for my lifestyle. The volatility of it, the the um, the time frames, the... You got me. I'm. That's all I got. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm glad I'm back on live. This is this is fun. Um, but yes, so I'm, in case you missed it or in case you're just now tuning in, I am finally teaching myself how to use TradingView. Embarrassing or not, whatever, it is what it is. Um, I've been using TradeStation for the past seven or eight years, so I just don't have a whole lot of experience with another trading platform. So... Like I get, I get the idea. I can see what time frame I'm in. I can see what uh, instrument I'm looking at. But it's just a matter of like figuring out how to draw trend lines and how to draw support and resistance and how to set alerts and stuff like that. So that's what I'm really trying to get a feel for tonight. Um, I want to set some alerts, and futures are consistent with time-based volatility. My guy, my guy, yes. <laughs> and I like. I mean, it's like I said, it's not one's not better than the other. Some people do excellent with futures. Some people do awful with futures. Some people are better with stocks. Some people are super shitty with stocks. I had a, I think my my profitability with stocks was pretty, was pretty. It was okay. It was not great. It, I wasn't able to be a full time trader with just the stock market. And I'll be totally honest with you, I hated getting up at like 5.30 in the morning to like analyze the market before it opened. That freaking sucks. <laughs> uh, so futures is definitely where it's at for me. Have you made your favorite bar yet? Have I made my favorite bars yet? Favorites? Bars yet. Bar yet. Um, what does that mean? Maybe color? I think you can connect TradeStation to TradingView so you can trade through TradingView. Um, Okay, super great point here. And if you guys know, that would be excellent. Um, Obviously, I can do my own research and figure it out. But apparently, (laughs) I've never been on live television before. No. um, So apparently, you can only connect. So you can connect TradeStation to TradingView. Sweet. Got it. Did it already. Um, apparently you cannot place live trades using trading view. If anyone knows the answer to that or knows if that's an incorrect statement, I would be delighted to hear that because how pointless would that be to connect my trading view, connect my trade station account to trading view and then not be able to place my live trades on it. Like, I mean, sure I could do all my chart analysis on trading view, but I just want to not have to use TradeStation because it literally sucks. Like, I want to go so far away from TradeStation as I possibly can. Unfortunately, I can't because they're my broker, so I can't get that far. Um, how long have you been trading and how long did it take you to reach consistent profitability? So, I've been trading for seven to eight years now. It's a long freaking time. If I invested that much time into, like, uh, school, I could probably be a doctor or something. Uh, but, no, I... I've spent seven to eight years trading, and this is my first year being full-time. Um, the consistent profitability, it happened maybe like maybe like three years ago, um, but this is finally the first year where it's, it's big enough consistent, profit, consistent profitability that like I can pay bills with it and stuff. Um, trading panel tab below. Um, worked great. Sent on Twitter. Oh, thank you, Jordan. I'll check it out. Um, okay, so I have my, I'll show you, I have my trade station connected. Oh, see, I'm not even in the right account. I bet you this account right here is, oh, no, okay, it says pro. Okay. Here's the thing, guys. I'm a little nervous to connect my trade station account right here, right now, because, uh, it might show my login and my account numbers and stuff. And I ain't about to have that on live television. <laughs> but um, 
if I can place live trades, if I can place live trades, could you go away, please? What's happening? On trading view with my trade station account. That would be the bomb.com. Tori, I've taken your uncle's course. Great info and strategy. I can zoom with you and show you around the platform. Trade station is your broker, but you can trade direct on trading view. Ah, Andy, thank you. That's so great to hear. Um, some people were telling me that I couldn't trade my live account and I could only trade simulated accounts uh, with the trading view trade station connection. But sweet, that is great to hear. Um, I'm super tech savvy, guys. Like I've, I'm the techiest tech girl in the whole in my little circle. So I will eventually figure this out. It's definitely going to take some time. Um, I'll watch a bunch of YouTube videos. And to be honest, I'll probably just spend enough time on the application itself to kind of get a feel for it. Um, Jed, I am in Pacific time, Pacific standard time. But hi, Andy. It's great to see you. I'm glad you were uh, stopping by. I, um, I took a loss today. So what's cool is I'll, I'll show you guys the loss I took today. And which, what would have been neat is if it connected my account, it could show you guys. But so I had some, I had my trend line here. Boom, boom, point A, point B. It crossed the trend line. Looked like it was breaking out of this trend line and headed in the up direction. And because it had, it had this um, horizontal, let me see if I can draw one. Oh, no. No, no, no. My Mac is about to die. Hold on. Give me two seconds, guys. It's about to get real bright in here. Yes, I have a sock on a light. Don't judge me. All right, we're putting the sock back on. <laughs> okay. Don't cry on me. Don't cry on me. <sighs> All right, we're good. Back to our um, regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's do an overview of oil. Let's just see what my next thoughts are going to be, how I would mark up the chart, and uh, the trade that I placed this morning, technically last night, but I closed it this morning. How much I lost, why I lost, why did I get in, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so here we go. I had a, a downtrend line here. And the price broke out of it. I went long right here in this little area and snapped down. Went against me. Got out. It didn't work. Um, lost $1,300. Now, maybe that sounds like a lot. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know if it depends on how much you guys trade with. Uh, but that is a normal loss for me. That wasn't anything crazy. So, I mean, yes, it sucks. Like, nobody likes taking losses. But it, was, it wasn't anything that I'm beating myself up about or freaking out about. So... Now I'm taking this trend line and I'm moving it to this point. And now um, oil does look like it's kind of it's kind of roll over. Pew, pew. But I wouldn't be thinking long again until it at least crosses this 84. So right now I don't have any indication or any reason to place any buy orders for oil at the moment. So that's where we're at. This is a really big file, but that's okay. Um, okay, so oil is what I trade the most. I'm going to mark it up just a little bit more. I always like to zoom in, out, not in. I like to zoom out as much as I can and get, get a lot of information. Um, something my uncle used to always tell me, and it's a super cool phrase, to trade right, like to trade correctly, to trade right, look to the left, which means see what the chart has done in the past to trade correctly. To trade right, look left. Um, are you funded or just a live account? No, I'm not, I'm not a funded trader or anything. I've actually never traded with a prop firm. Um, I just trade my own account. So I don't have any experience trading with prop firms. I do make content for the funded trader. So I'll pop out some cool videos for them. Um, but no, I'm not like associated with them in the trading aspect. And they told me even if I wanted to, I couldn't because <laughs> it's like a conflict of interest. So also good job on the interviews. Exciting to watch. 
Thank you. It's the coolest thing ever. I'll be honest. Like, this is the only reason I do some content for TFT is because I get to talk to these. I get to, like, pick all these traders' brains. Like, I get to hear their stories, their strategies, their success, their fa their failures. It's like, I don't know. I I did not have much experience with any other traders point blank period. So when my uncle taught me how to trade, which was like seven or eight years ago, it was just me, my uncle, and he taught my sister also, but she ended up uh, going in a different direction. She pursued a music career, a singing career, which is way cool. She got on The Voice. It was the coolest thing ever. Um, but I stuck to trading. Excuse me. Um, okay, so yeah, I didn't know anyone. And it was, it seemed actually like it was almost, back then it seemed like it was almost frowned upon to like, post profits and your trades and talk about finances like it just felt icky for some weird reason back then now it's everywhere and it's the coolest thing ever and so many traders are connected and I get to talk to so many traders around the world we get to like I get to see what their strategy is we get to I get to see theirs they get to see, <laughs> they get to see mine <laughs> my strategy um it's it's a really cool conversation it's it's always the coolest like getting to know these people and a lot of them I, I try to keep in contact with uh so it's really cool um us 30 or um i actually hi polaris i don't trade forex wah, wah, sorry i trade futures though so i trade oil gold silver uh s p 500 the Dow, the NASDAQ, stuff like that. No lie, I can definitely see that you are just as interested in what's being said as us. Okay, good. I'm so glad to hear that. I, I am hands down fascinated by these traders. Uh, so it's nice that that translates on the camera, that you can tell I'm incredibly engaged. It's the coolest ever. It's really cool. Um, okay, let's move on. No, we're going to continue on oil. So Oil, I want to put, I want to put some lines on the screen. Uh, don't judge me. I'm still learning how to work this. I think I want a horizontal line. I want it to go in definitely in either direction. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so right here, it's hit this point quite a few times. Here, we'll count it, not quite, but close. It's hit here, tapped it barely here. And it hit last night there. So the 8130-ish mark. I mean, maybe we'll call it just 81 or 8150, whatever. In between there. But this 8130 mark has hit multiple times. Looks like an important point of resistance here now. Um, so we'll see. We got that. Um, I want to mark up these two highs here because we got boom, 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 boom. Let's do that. And I usually like to change the colors of my lines, too. I guess I'll figure out how to do that in a minute. Oh, okay, I can see the pencil here. Um, so what I like to do is I make my downtrend lines red and my uptrend lines green. And speaking of colors, um, another really cool psychology theory and I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say um I'm gonna read some of these comments really quick do you have any advice or tips for those that have jobs while attempting to trade oh absolutely Sean yeah I've definitely done that um it's a matter of consistency I would say it's I found myself taking a lot longer to become more consistently profitable when I wasn't consistent with my trading. So I would just, I mean, when you're working another job, it's just freaking hard, like point blank. Like everyone knows that. It is not easy be trying to become a trader and working a part-time job or a full-time job. So um, I'd say if you can stay as consistent as possible with your strategy and with your trading. So personally, I found myself like taking breaks. Like I would go, I would be so caught up in work. I would take like a week, two weeks, sometimes even three weeks off of trading, and that was not okay. 
it completely messed up my psychology. Getting back into a trade after taking that long of a break was 10 times harder. I was uh, hesitant. I was skeptical. I was questioning myself, second guessing. So I think consistency is number one overall for the best advice for um, tips to trading while having a job. But yes, excellent question. And um, another thing that I was going to mention was like the the psychology behind the colors of trading. So something that my uncle taught me is that, whoops, I don't want that, is that the colors that you put on your chart can unconsciously give you a bias. So let's say that you are thinking that the market's going to go up or down, bull or bear, bullish or bearish, and you have you know red lines on the chart and green lines on the chart. Well, obviously green line is like, it's a happy feeling. It's a happy color. It's making money. It's green like money. It's like, it's a good feeling. And then when you start seeing red, you start panicking. Your heart rate comes up a little more. So there's just, there's so many different aspects of this um, psychology. Your accent is giving me a strong I can sing vibes. <laughs> I cannot sing to save my life. But my um, entire family can. How did I manage to not get that like, it's all right. I just tell uh, tell myself that it was God's way of humbling me because it'd be game over if I could sing. You know what I'm saying? It'd be game over. Um, but yes, like I was saying, the psychology behind the colors, even something as simple as the colors that you see on your chart can increase anxiety or give you a bias. Uh, it's, it's like psychology behind trading is this like never ending fascination for me. There's, there's, Tons of strategies. There's thousands of strategies. Um, but I think when it comes to psychology, that's... I mean, we all have to agree that, like, obviously, learning the fundamentals is the most important. Yes, it is. You got to at least learn a strategy or learn the fundamentals before you get into the market. That's, like, almost an obvious. But the importance of psychology is just incredibly significant. So it's, it's hard for people to say, you know, like psychology is more important or fundamentals and strategy is more important. I just think that, I think psychology is so important because anyone can learn a strategy, but it's like the way that you implement it is the important part. So something to keep in mind. True colors affect our psychology. Yes, so true. So I'll probably be marking up the colors on here. What I usually like to do is, um, for my candles, I like to actually make them all one color. Like, even if it closes higher or lower, so that I don't have any bias. Sorry, got a text. But um, that's really... What I've been trying to do tonight is just learn this system. Um, another thing that I want to do is I want to draw some uptrend lines and put some alerts on them. And then really, like, that's that's all I need for oil for tonight. So as long as I have um, some downtrend lines and uptrend lines on this chart and some alerts, then I'm ready for the night. And if one gets crossed, I know that I'll need to either engage or disengage in a trade. So... Okay. Sorry, brain is tuning in out. I'm trying to work through analysis paralysis. <laughs> I need to pull the trigger sometimes. Um, what are your sleep patterns like? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't really have one. I guess I suck at staying up late. <laughs> um, I try, but I think last night I was up maybe till like one 
Um, but I don't have I don't have a great schedule or a great sleeping pattern. Um, I don't have a great schedule or a great sleeping pattern. So that's something I need to work on. It comes to discipline. But yes, um, hi Leo. I'm from the U.S. I'm in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, I'm just looking over oil. And while I've got this up, I'm going to put a ray from here to here. This is not as hard <laughs> to work as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so this is what we got. Here are my ideas for oil right now. So um, what I'm thinking for oil right now looks like it's rolling over, headed down. Um, if it continues down and bounces off of this horizontal line that I have at like this 8130 point, I mean really even if it bounces off, so even if it gets to this like 82-ish, or even if it gets close to 84, like I'm still not thinking of initiating a trade until it breaks out of one of these two lines. So it could go back and forth all day. Um, I'm not a great range trader, so it wouldn't be beneficial to me or my strategy. But um, once the price of oil breaks out of one of these two trend lines, then I'll be thinking of initiating a trade. But until then, I'm just going to kind of sit back. What's one skill or habit that you've been trying to master lately? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I am a cyclist, so I've been, I've been riding bikes for like ten years. Um, I used to race. I used to be a sponsored athlete, and I would race in like Milan and Brooklyn and Florida and LA. And uh, but that was a really long time ago. I, I don't know if I want to be competitive like an athlete again but I definitely would like to just get back into riding because I've taken a significantly long break a really long break so I think I would like to get back into cycling you know be strong enough to be like fast again and ride in like these fast packs but uh that's I think that's a skill that I would like to master again Um, I wish I could see how many viewers we have. I can't, but for, um, this is going to be the dorkiest, girliest thing that you guys have heard all day, maybe all week, or maybe just right now, but, um, do you guys know your zodiac sign? <laughs> what is, get a mountain bike. How about you get a road bike, Jordan? How about that? How about that? Okay. They make semi thick tires for road bikes. Give it a try. <laughs> um, I'd say that having a mechanical rule based edge is the most important thing, but good psychology is the most difficult thing to acquire, and that's why it should be the main focus after having a strategy. I completely agree with you. Okay, we got a Gemini. We got a Gemini. Ooh, Leo. I'm a Leo. And I'm going to be honest, I love Geminis. I know that you guys don't get a whole lot of love, and some people think y'all crazy, but I love it. <laughs> they scare me. <laughs> uh, oh, the road bikes. thought you were talking about Geminis. I mean, I would understand that. Um, you may have mentioned this before, but I joined, uh, what time frames do you like for entries? Ooh, no, I didn't mention that yet. Why is, hold on, I feel like somebody's watching my live, and I just don't know it, and they're texting me right now. Um, 
attract a lot of Geminis. I think that's a Leo thing, which is weird because I don't think that Geminis like the, um, I'm not going to call it arrogance of a Leo, but it's like there's a little, a little something extra that maybe we could tone down, but it's, you know, it's fine. Jordan is an Aquarius. Okay, okay. Um, my brother-in-law is an Aquarius, and he is the most, the kindest human being I've ever met on the planet. Like, the most, like, pure heart. I mean, obviously, this is different for everyone, but... Ha! <laughs> Shamari, you're a Scorpio. <laughs> my little sister is a Scorpio. And I love her with my whole freaking heart. Um, okay, but here's one thing that I bet you guys don't know. So sure, maybe you know your zodiac sign, that's cool. But um, this is maybe even more of a guy thing, so maybe it'd be cooler for you anyways. There's a thing called a primal zodiac. So it is a, it's a combination of your um, Chinese birth year mixed with your, this sounds dorky as hell, don't come at me, mixed with your zodiac sign, and then it tells you what animal you are. So I'll just go ahead and give you an overview. I am a ferret, that's my primal zodiac sign. And I'm telling you, the cre it is, it's creepily accurate. I'm not even like, I'm not a superstitious person. I'm not like, I'm not even that much into Zodiac stuff. Like, I mean, I know that I'm a Leo. And then if anytime someone tells me what their sign is, I just like associate them with another one that I know. Like, to be honest, I don't really know much about Zodiac stuff. But Primal Zodiacs, ridiculous. So cool. So if you just Google Primal Zodiac sign, Oh, you're a crow. That's so cool. Okay, the fact that you know that just literally blew my mind. That's pretty cool. Um, but the coolest thing is under the career section for a ferret, it said stock market. That's like, I don't know. It blew my freaking mind. Um, ferrets stink unless you remove the sweat gland. Well, uh, same here, my brother. I stink. Um... I have never had a ferret, and I don't know what... Whoa, bird of paradise. That sounds epic. Jeez. <laughs> um, my sisters are... So I have three younger sisters. One is a honey badger. You could only imagine. <laughs> she's also a Scorpio. <laughs> she's cray-cray. But she's... Oh, my God. You guys actually should look her up. She's, she's like kind of like a new influencer. She's almost got a million followers on TikTok. She's super into, like, fashion and hair and makeup. And she's, like, the bubbliest, cutest freaking blonde version of me and a little bit younger. Um, but if you look her up on TikTok, her name is Shay Sullivan. Uh, she's the greatest. She's so fun. She's such a goober, but her primal zodiac. Okay, we'll, we'll go back into stocks. <laughs> uh, my birthday's in August. I am a Leo. I'm a deer. Aww. So I don't know any ravens. I don't know any birds of paradise. Do I know a bird of paradise? No, I don't think I know any birds of paradise. And I don't know any deers. So you guys are all new. <laughs> um, if you send me your primal zodiac on Twitter, I will definitely go look it up. Okay, so we're looking at oil. It's looking like we're rolling over. Um, also, let me see how long this recording is. It's four gigabytes. It's kind of a big file. Um, that's okay. I'll be on for 15 more minutes. We'll hang out for 15 more minutes. Why not? Okay, but so far we're looking at oil. It's looking like it's rolling over. Um, but like I said before, I'm not going to be considering placing any trades in oil until it at least breaks out of one of these trend lines. So I'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines for oil. But let's take a look at the, um, I'm trying to figure out if the symbols are the same on trade station as they are in here. So usually on trade station, you have to do the at symbol. Oh, okay, cool. So let's look at the NQ. So that is going to be the E mini NASDAQ futures. Um, I've never seen the explanation point before. Maybe that's a trading view thing but I'm going to click it anyways. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. 
Um, why don't you want to be short? Um, just because I'm a, I'm more of a breakout trader than I am a, I mean, it would make sense to be short since we we're still continuing under this trend line. So I would be comfortable being in a short position as long as it stayed under this trend line. But I'm just, I'm more comfortable when I, when I place breakout trades. Maybe it's a flaw. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But that's, that's why. Okay, there we go. And I would have felt a lot more comfortable um, if I had maybe gone into a short position much earlier. To get into a short position right now seems a little late. It's like I kind of missed the move. We've been going down since the 11th. Down, 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 down. But, hey. This could go down so much further. Command Z and click the plus sign next time. Oh, thank you, Jordan. <laughs> um, so you're just not going to talk about your favorite time frames? Oh, sorry, Sean. Sorry. Obviously, I maybe have ADHD and I keep getting off track. Um, favorite time frames. For my entries, it's a 60 minute. That's just all there is to it. I am more comfortable with a 60 minute. I feel like there is more. Um, let me articulate my vocabulary words. I get more of a confirmation. So I am. I feel more confident that the price is going to be heading in a certain direction once it either breaks out of a trend line or bounces off of a support and resistance or breaks a support and resistance when it does it on a 60 minute time frame. I just feel more comfortable placing that trade in a 60 minute instead of a, a lower time frame. And to be honest, the 60 minute is really where I stay. I will sometimes move to a 30 minute occasionally just when I'm playing around with the chart, but for the most part, all my trades are placed on a 60 minute time frame. When I am doing chart analysis, I will zoom out as much as I can. Um, I'll maybe look at the daily chart, maybe even the weekly chart, and just get an overview of the direction of the, the instrument that I'm trading. And then I'll slowly make my way back into a 60 minute time frame. Seasonal tendencies. Um, I don't know. But also, guys, I'm trying to figure out how to add another chart. Oh, never mind. I think I got it. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> okay. Uh, do I? No, I don't. I don't. Okay, now we're going to look at, let's look at the YM. Okay, so YM is a little bit different than oil. Um, we have a beautiful support line right here. Hit it spot on. So let's go ahead and just mark that while we're here. Boom. And boom. Okay. All right. That's done. Now let's zoom out a little bit more. Um, I got to get rid of some of these old lines. I don't know where they came from. I don't know how long they've been there. I already love this platform. I love it. This is it's a beautiful platform. Obviously, they've been in the game for a long time. Okay, so I'm going to use a ray instead of a trend line because I want the line to go indefinitely in one. Whoops. Messed it up already. Okay, so here we go. How how beautiful is that? Three touch points is just, uh, uh, it's just so satisfying. So we've got point A, point B, and point C. Now here is a very interesting point that we're at. So the Dow is either going to break through this downtrend that it's been in since like the 15th and continue up. Or, I mean, there's there's so many possibilities. So this can either break, break out, and then it could be a fake out, and then head in the wrong, not in the wrong, in the down direction. I already have a bias. God, listen to me. Um, or this could break out and continue up. Or this could continue this downtrend with the three points here. Three points of resistance, boom, boom, and boom, and continue down. So... Okay, I'm going back to my questions. Sorry, guys. Took a minute. Um, how long do you tend to hold trades? I, I hold trades for, I would say, about a day. 
Sometimes it's multiple days, um, but I never hold my trades over the weekend. So if even if I've got an excellent trade going and it's Friday and I'm up and it's like, there was a time where I was up, like, I think it was almost three grand and it was Friday and I'm like, I'm in a great position, but I just, I can't, with the possibility of gaps or, it's just, I can't hold over the weekend. So I just don't. So I close it and then I get back in on Sunday afternoon. But for the most part, just a day. Um, how did you get into the funded trader? Uh, they found me on social media. They found me on Instagram. <laughs> Facts. Um, what were you trading on before TradingView? So I was trading on something called TradeStation. And it's just they've got so much work to do. They're, maybe they're, they're an excellent broker. But as far as their trading platform goes, when it comes to um, Apple and Mac and iOS devices, they suck. Suck. It's the literal worst. Oh, my God. It's awful. It's given me so much anxiety, so I can't. I can't do it anymore. So now I'm going to be doing – oh, also, if you're just now tuning in, even though I'm probably going to hop off in, like, the next 10 minutes. But I'll give you guys an overview <laughs> of what tonight was about. So tonight was me kind of just – Figuring out, I just now downloaded the TradingView platform. It's on my Mac. It looks beautiful. I mean, everything is streamlined. This thing is, I mean, it's fast. It's, obviously, they know what they're doing here. Are you funded with the funded trader? No. Um, I've never traded any prop firms before. So I only trade my own personal account. Um, but it does look like TradingView View. TradingView does connect to my broker, so um, that's what I'm going to figure out how to do. So if you, I was looking down here, so if I scroll this up, I am not doing so great with the, this mic in the way. So they do connect to TradeStation, so I'm going to try to figure this out tonight. I'll connect it. I'll see if it lets me um, play some trades. Um, but I'm I'm into it. I don't, after tonight, I do not need to use the trade station platform to do my chart analysis or hopefully place trades in the future. So I'm no longer going <laughs> to rely on the trade station platform. So I'm just going to be using trading view. I'm, I'm so into it. It's incredibly user friendly. I'm already catching on. So, and I don't need to know how to do much. Like I just need to draw some trend lines, some support and resistance, set some alerts. Uh, that's really about it. But this was fun. Thank you guys for hanging out. Um, it was what, an hour? Well, that's not bad. Hour, hour long live. I love hanging out with y'all. Um, but I will, I'll answer it. So I'm, I'll be on for the next five more minutes. So I'll just kind of leave this for, uh, for questions. I will, I'll open the floor up for some questions if you guys have them. Um, find the same server on TradingView as your broker. Uh, would love to collaborate and pick your brain. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Um, send me a DM on either like Twitter or Instagram, and we'll uh, we'll link up. I'm really good at doing interviews, <laughs> apparently. Uh, how did you make such a capital to be able to lose 1.3 in a trade? Um, it took me it took me a very long time to to build this capital. Like I'm talking, I've been trading for like seven to eight years. Oh, my God, you freaking finally made it, Brandon. Damn. Well, guess what? I'm about to get off in, like, five minutes, so you done missed it. <laughs> um, but, hey. Um, I'll be honest. So I was giving everybody an overview of kind of what tonight was. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to use TradingView because <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm not that savvy with it. I've never used it. I've only used TradeStation, which is funny. Every time I post a trade, everyone's like, what, what platform is that? And I'm like, guys, listen. It's not it. It's not him. You are not him. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out how to use TradingView. I'm trying to set some alerts. Um, trying to figure out how to draw trend lines and some support and resistance stuff. Nothing too complicated. I'm not even really trying to add any indicators or anything. So I just downloaded the platform. I got to connect my TradingView trade station to it. But um, I'm excited to start using it. God, it is 10,000 times more user friendly and... It doesn't glitch on me when I'm in a trade. But yeah, that was uh, my whole live tonight, basically.
miss anything tonight? Is there like some big games going on? Did um the Warriors play the Lakers yet? Did I miss that? Did we lose? Don't tell me. Never mind. I don't want to know. But I am opening the floor for questions. So whatever you guys got. Do you want to try a prop firm challenge? Um, Leo, that is a good question. And to be totally honest, since like I am trying to be a wannabe trading influencer, it would make sense for me to at least try one, you know, like maybe document my, I can't, I can't try, um, the funded trader because I make content for them. I'll make some videos for them and I interview some of their payout people for them. So they said it's a conflict of interest if I go with their prop firm, but I could try any other one, you know? Oh, they're playing right now. Oh no. How's it going? Um, are trend lines your go-to? Yes, trend lines are definitely my go-to, um, especially when the price breaks out of a trend line. That's like, that's my sauce right there. I, um, that's, how, that's usually when I initiate my trades. I'll either engage or disengage in a trade um, when price breaks out of a trend line. There are times where I will initiate a trade based on the price bouncing off of a trend line. Um, what's a goal that you haven't completed for the year? Hmm. A goal that I haven't completed for the year. I told myself I was going to ride a lot more, ride my bike a lot more. Um, it depends on which team you're rooting for. <laughs> uh, I couldn't, I don't know if you could tell with the, um, the purple here, but it is, it's definitely the Lakers. I'm out in LA. Feel free to not answer, but does the funded trader pay you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't work for free. <laughs> so yes, they definitely, they definitely pay me. I mean, I don't think that changes anything though. I'm not like. I think one of the biggest things is people think on YouTube that like the interviews are fake and I mean I how you could script something like that is beyond me but that's something that uh, people are skeptical about on um ah great books that I read um one that I would love to finish that I haven't started yet no you know what I have started but I think I keep reading the same freaking three paragraphs is the subtle art of not giving a fuck Okay, all right, I have one minute, guys. Um, highly recommend How to Win Friends and Influence People. I know it's not trading related, but it's just good for the soul. It's good for human interaction and connection. Um, but that's definitely one of my favorite books. I've read it probably 10 times. And they even have new versions of the book. So there's something called How to Win Friends and Influence People in a Digital Age. It's an excellent book. Um, highly recommend it. And if you're into something kind of grungy and you like um, Guardians of the Galaxy, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn, wrote a book like way back in the day. And I read this when I was in high school and I felt like I was doing something that I shouldn't because it was like such a raunchy book. Um, it was called The Toy Collector. It's about this guy that does drugs and has sex and all this crazy stuff. And um, he's obsessed with toys. And it's, it's a really cool book. It's definitely a direct reflection of James Gunn. It's super cool. But, okay. All right. It's 930, guys. Thank you for hanging out tonight. I'm going to hop off. But um, this was fun. I know it's been a while, but I, I had to do it. I had to rip the bandaid off. I had to go live. Uh, this is fun. I'm excited for TradingView. I'm super freaking excited for TradingView. If I have questions, I will probably post them on Twitter because I know you all know what you're doing when it comes to TradingView. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. I'm going to hop off. Bye. I haven't hit the end button yet. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye, Shamar. Thank you.